Being rushed into recess is 57-year-old Roy, who was found unconscious at home. Hey, do you want to come in here? Paramedics think he may have choked on his own vomit. Oh, this morning, uh, unresponsive. Like we've aspirated, and suction is our way out. When we get patients into the resuscitation room and they are unresponsive, it can be a highly stressful situation. It's very important to keep your head and stay calm. I don't think the nerves ever go away, and I think that's probably a good thing. How much oxygen have we got going through? Right. 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 If Roy has inhaled vomit, his breathing could have been affected, causing damage to his brain and vital organs. Hello, Roy. All right, lovey. You're speaking to us, that's good. Good, he's fighting on that. That's good. Hello, Roy. Oh. Good, good, good. I don't know whether that's aspirate or smart. Can you find anything? This could be interesting. Is it? Is he at home on his own? He's got two lodges, Elizabeth. And blood sugar all right for you? Uh, blood sugar 13.8. He's insulin dependent diabetic. He has a carer comes in every day and gives him insulin. And his family? Do we know? Any next of kin? The team are trying desperately to track down Roy's family. So you've got the compression base here over 66. We could just run that fluid through, that could be good. Is he allergic to anything? When you've got those under control, and you want to call for a chest X-ray, we could do with, with nobody to explain what happened. It's difficult to work out what's causing his unconscious state, and he's deteriorating. Let's get him on the bed. We can sit him up a little bit and see if we can improve on that. But his uh, gases are not great. Yeah, to it. <sighs> For Roy, the next hour is critical. In Resus Bay 3, Dr Mason and her team are battling to save Roy, who was found unconscious and unresponsive at home. He's still dangerously ill. Morning. Morning. Dr Sugrat Siddiqui from Critical Care has been called in to assist. So, this gentleman, found undetermined amount of time that he's been down for, not on the floor, not fallen, to our knowledge, not injured himself. Uh, just found by his landlord. We don't know how mobile he is normally. Not great looking at him. We're giving him anti antibiotics for aspiration pneumonia just because of the story and not being quite clear what was going on. But he's a penicillin allergic. We've had to give him quite a whack of tycoplanium, I think. Yeah, because he's 190 kilos. Can we try, Tobias, get hold of mum um, or GP? Notes or Find out if we've got any more information on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we get the BiPAP out then? The BiPAP mask will keep a constant flow of pressurised air to Roy's lungs and support his breathing. I don't think this foot looks brilliant either. Try. Oh, hello, it's Sue Mason, one of the any consultants here. I've got a guy in recess, a 56 year old man not really responding to treatment. So we've had critical care down here for a while. We've popped him on some BiPAP, we've given him lots of fluid, he's had some metraminol, he's had lots of antibiotics, um, and he's not uh, responding at all. If anything, he's deteriorated slightly. With no sign of improvement, Roy's children are rushing to be by his side. Waiting to see him in the paediatric assessment bay is 10-year-old Kobe. Hello. Who's this? My name's James. I'm one of the doctors. What have you done? Shot my finger. Okay. How did you do that? In the gear. Right to you. Can I take a look? Yeah. Are you going to look away? Yeah. Should we like put one of these on it? <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Okay. You're doing really well. What are you going to do? Now. Now. I'm just looking. That's fine, you can cover it back up. They've brought Kobe's fingertip with them. Is the rest of it in here somewhere? Yeah, it's just up to you. Can I have to show you them your skin and your peas? <laughs> it's too small to back on. So if you know, you, you can probably still eat your peas. Are you sure they do? Well, they're peas, man. Do you want to keep it as a souvenir? Yeah, I'll put it in a little box. <laughs> so, uh, we'll get you around for an x-ray. 
Okay, I think it's probably gone through the bone as well, but we just need to be certain. Or we can chop it off at the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Good plan. Have you had some medicine? No, would you like some? Okay, we'll get that sorted out for you as well. It won't take it away completely, but it will help. Do you feel up to going around to x ray? Right. I'll give you that. Should we give these to Dad? Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh my God, Dad, hold your finger. I've got your finger. <laughs> 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 An X-ray should reveal if Kobe has caused any serious and long-term damage to his finger. Ten-year-old Kobe chopped the tip of his finger off in a gate. Thank you. He's had an X-ray to check for any damage. Despite his injury, Kobe can still point them in the right direction. I've no idea where we are. Studying his results is Dr. Griffiths. It's uh, one of his x-ray. It looks like he's just, it's not quite as round. Just he, he's just like shaved the, the tip of his toe. He's coping with it very well, aren't he? Kids at that age are a bit like salamanders. They tend to grow back when they chop things off. So, although it looks horrific for the child and the parents, and they're all freaking out, you, you know, from experience, you know that it, it's going to be fine. See ya. Okay, just have a sit down for me. Just in this one. Dressing Kobe's wounds is Nurse Kate Ellis. We're going to give it a little clean. Okay. Just got to give it a little wipe because it's been trapped in a mucky gate, hasn't it? Might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I'll be as quick as possible, okay? We've got to, she's got to clean it. We've got to clean it because we don't want it to get infected, all right? Can I squeeze onto your hand? If you must. I'm scared. Look, it's got fluffy bits stuck to it already. Are you doing that to my nail? It's to the end of your finger. You're doing a really good job. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to cut your finger off. <laughs> not one. I won't go to all that effort with that bandage if I were just going to chop it off. <laughs> so, does that feel okay? Yeah? Can you wiggle your finger a little bit for me? Perfect. Sorted. So, keep it nice and dry. Regular pain relief for him because it will be sore, alright? And uh, we'll get you an appointment to make the car. Lovely, come this way for me! Come on, Sure. Kobe was able to go back to school the next day and went on to make a full recovery. The same can't be said for the frozen peas. In Resus Bay 2 is 85 year old Pearl. She was rushed in by ambulance, fighting for breath. Right, can I have a little listen to your chest and things? Is that all right? Feel free. Treating her are Dr K and Nurse Kim Gibson. I'm just going to borrow your hands first of all. I'm just going to have a quick feed of your pulses. Your heart's racing a little bit, isn't it? I don't feel as breathless. That's good. Right then, should we get some bloods off you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had much to give. I need to get no. your chest area, is that all right? What the bloody hell? Oh, it's all my bits and bobs. Should we get your junction here. Yeah. Wires all over. Hey. And what would we do without you? That's it. And we grumble about the health service, but... What would we do without them? So I'm just going to borrow this little vein here, if that's OK. Don't worry, I'm not going to get you. No, there's not much to see. <laughs> Sound like mine, Anna. I'm only a shadow of the person I used to be. <laughs> Hey, laughing. That's what me and I thought, yeah. I used to do this out door girl at Pontins. Did you? Yeah. So, listening to your chest, and with you having the cough that you have, I think you've got a chest infection or a pneumonia. I so, understand. 
I've done some special blood tests here to see if we get any bugs that grow in your blood. Okay. Better not be. Well, exactly. So we're going to give you some antibiotics and some fluids now. You're obviously needing a bit of oxygen and we'll get an x-ray of your chest while you're in here as well. You'll be staying in hospital today, I'm afraid. You'll probably be with us for a few days. Oh, no. I know. No. But we need to get you sorted, don't we? What about my cat? Palmer. I'm afraid we need to look after you, don't we? Because if we don't look after you, you no, you'll not be in a position. Will. You won't be able to look after Homer either, will you? No. So we need to get you sorted. Yeah. What are you here for? <gasps> I'll leave you with it. All right. <laughs> so who are these gentlemen you've got with you? That's my son, Robert. Yep. Um, oh, fine. Nice to meet you both. My name's George. I'm one of the A&E doctors. All right. So um, I was just coming back to speak to you about your blood tests and your x-ray, if that's right. OK. Yeah. So um, your blood tests show you've got an infection. Right. We knew that anyway. OK. Yeah. Your x-ray shows you probably do have a patch of infection on this right-hand side yeah, where I your crackles were. Something untoward there. Uh, chest infection and pneumonia are the same thing. One we just see on an x-ray and one we don't. Right. So the treatment's the same. Treated, I know. Treated yep. the same. Yep. Antibiotics. So we just need to get you up onto the ward. As a general rule... Yeah, it's safer to be in the night. You, so you need to stay in because yeah, well, your heart's still racing well, and, you're yeah. needing, and you're needing oxygen. Yes. So I can't let you go home if you're needing oxygen. She's obviously told me she's a smoker. Yes, yeah. I'm surprised that the doctor hasn't told you at your age you should know better. I've already smoking. done that, yeah. yeah. We've already told you off, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. It's not about quantity of life, it's about quality, isn't it? No, no. Is it? Smoking, oh. smoking affects the quality. Well, yeah, that's true. You don't want to be in here every month, do you? Eventually, the quantity as well. Because that's what we see with a lot of people that have been smoking all their life. They're in kind of every two, three, four weeks. And I would argue that probably isn't a good quality of life. But you've got an infection. Yes, we know you have pneumonia. But actually, you're looking better than when you first came in, which is good. Well, okay. I'll, feel a, yeah. I'll feel a bit better. Good. I felt terrible. After ten days on a ward, Pearl was well enough to go home and was reunited with her much-loved Moggy. In recess, junior Dr Chapman's patient, David, has throat cancer. His breathing tube has become infected. And this is the ENT. Oh, hello. Concerned about his severe hello, symptoms, you? junior Dr Chapman called the ear, nose and throat specialists. Dr Joe Godby here has been sent in to help. Hello, my name's Joe. I'm one of the ENT registrars. Have you met before? So the kind of mucky-looking discharge, mm. how long has that been? Going on today, it's got just today. today, yeah. And do you often have problems with infection of your tracheostomy? No. no, it's been sleeping virtually non stop, yeah. So okay. it's been hard to say whether it's, whether it's been the chemo, yeah, okay. or it's illness, yeah, okay. Because it looks yeah. infected, I think the best thing is to probably change the tube to so put a nice, clean, fresh one in so it's not a source of infection. And I want to have a look down into your windpipe with my camera just to check what it's like inside, yeah. see how far the infection is. Head back a little bit, take that out. When you take an emergency referral, it's the most stressful time. You deal with a lot of things like airway problems, so people with difficulty breathing, which is obviously quite a worrying thing and it's something that can go wrong very quickly. OK, Let's have a little peek. Can you repeat that for me? You're breathing through your mouth. Uh. In recess, Dr Godby here has spoken to a consultant for a second opinion on David's condition. David's cancer has advanced and the prognosis isn't good. I'm really sorry to be a bearer of bad news, but I've got to be honest with you and tell you what, what I think is going on. From what I've seen in your windpipe, my concern is that the cancer's grown and it's spread into your windpipe, and that's why you're getting the issue with the bleeding and the infection, and that's why your tube wasn't sitting properly, and I'm having difficulty putting a tube in. 
you look really well at the moment, your breathing's fine, but my concern is if it gets any bigger, that not might be the case, mm. and, it, and it could kill you. I think breaking bad news that someone's going to die from their illness is by a long way the hardest thing you ever have to do as a doctor. And we can't get rid of the cancer. We won't be able to treat it when it's this advanced. Are you aware of that? Yeah. yeah. No one finds it easy. It's always really difficult. Is there anyone on hand to chat with you about what would happen if your heart were to stop due to that? No. No, OK. So in that situation, we don't think as, as medical doctors it would be a very good idea to start jumping on your chest and restarting it because you wouldn't come out very well out of it and it would be more than likely it wouldn't work okay. because you've got an advanced cancer. Mm. I wasn't expecting it to have that outcome. I'm finding that quite difficult to deal with at the moment. My Dean is... Um, in the street approximately 45 minutes ago. He's got a laceration to the forehead, one there to the bridge of the nose, which you can see. What have you fallen onto? Road. Road? Yeah. Just straight onto the road, onto the kerb or anything? No, just the road. I don't do things by half. No. no. no <laughs> now, since you've had a blow to the front of the head, we have to be very careful. We can't rule out whether there's bleeding a bleed on the inside and you may come in feeling fine with that and then only go on to deteriorate later. So for that reason we're going to do the scan. Dean is sent for an urgent CT scan because a bleed on the brain could be life-threatening. <laughs> the Barnsley casualty team are part way through another tiring shift. Sister Jane also has the challenge of working alongside several junior doctors new to the department. If I can't remember the names, I'll say to them, lovely, would you just do this for me? Thanks, lovely. That's the issue, my love. But you do get to know them. You do get to know who they are. Okay. It's nice of you to come up and see me. In recess, junior Dr King is looking after 53-year-old Dean who's had a bad fall. Your teeth feeling OK? Yeah. Do you have any pain in your neck at all? No. Heart-wise, we're stable. I don't think that's anything to be too concerned about. Yeah. But doctors are worried Dean might have a life-endangering bleed on his brain. He's just had a CT scan. I'm happy to do the suturing up now. Do you have a modelling career at all? No. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> In terms of how you interact with a patient and how you communicate with people varies. I certainly have a different bedside manner seeing maybe an ill child and a worried mum than I would seeing someone who has fallen over. The CT results will be in soon. If there is a bleed, Dean will be rushed into theatre. Do you feel comfortable enough there? Yeah, but I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> If you were looking forward to it, that would be a bit strange. <laughs> That's stinging a bit. Yeah. You doing good there, Dean? You feel me touching this here? Touching it where? <laughs> good. Here? No. Just carry on. Can you just relax? Imagine you're somewhere nice. Does that feel OK? Yeah. It will feel a bit weird. You can feel some pushing and pulling. It's OK at the moment. It's OK. It's good. When he fell, Dean was rushing home for a rather unusual delivery. Two penguins. I collect uh, ornaments and wild animals. What sort of wild animals? Uh, tigers, mm. leopards, elephants, believe it or not, two penguins. You got space for all these in the house? There's only me who lives in the house, so. All right. Just you and your zoo? Yeah. OK, stitching's all done. You're a pretty picture. <laughs> Junior Dr King is now able to review the CT scan images. I'm 
had a look through that myself. Uh, it looks okay to me. Good. Uh, we do. In paediatrics, junior doctor Chapman is seven hours into his 10 hour shift. His latest patient is one year old Timmy, who's had a severe seizure. Clear. Essentially, we just need to make sure there's no other infections anywhere, is there? Whenever you're seeing something for the first time, it's quite stressful because you've read about it, but you haven't actually managed it in a normal time frame, so to speak. The rule is just to rule out anything else going on. Earlier, Timmy's mum, Nicole, measured his temperature at 41 degrees. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, done. So he's got some red inflamed tonsils and there's a little bit of pus on there, so he's definitely got an, what we call an upper respiratory tract infection. And that's what's causing his fever. And we need to go and weigh him so I can figure out how much we can give him of drugs. We can see how fat you are. <laughs> so bring him on with me. Let's lie him in this lovely bucket here. Timmy needs antibiotics to fight the infection. His weight will be used to calculate the dose. 9.98, perfect. Thank you, Mum. It's not a bed. In potentially serious cases like this, junior doctors seek the advice of senior colleagues. Timothy is a one-year-old, previously fit and well, with normal pregnancy history. Um, Consultant Dr Dave Walker Dave is the clinical Dave lead on shift today. Symptoms. Despite the fever this afternoon, mum reports he was a bit quieter than normal for about 10 minutes, and then she turned around and for four minutes he was shaking. Calling on the help of senior doctors is extremely valuable. Yeah, he's so got like inflamed tonsils and had a bit of a cough, so that's yeah. most likely the focus. It's good for patients and their parents because they're getting the best care possible at that moment in time. It's the first time you've ever had one of these. Yeah. So at the moment, I think it's a febrile convulsion. Um, just because I've never managed one in the acute yeah. phase, I just want to get a boss to have a quick look at them, especially because yeah, yeah. one is old and had a fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first time, first febrile fits. Yeah. The um, mid. Yeah. If your child's ill, it's a pretty emotive and stressful situation for a parent, and coming into hospital is a big thing. Um, so you kind of have to help them as well as the child. We admit all children with these in this hospital to the paediatric team just for a period of observation and for them to have a look at him as well. OK, but now you're on your mum's lap, you look a bit happier. So what we'll probably do is give you a cup of, like, sugary water and a syringe just to encourage him to give him some fluids, OK? He's got a fruity couch in his bag. Is he? We can have that if you want. <laughs> Not some food. On the ward, Timmy continued to improve. After being monitored overnight, he went home the next day. <laughs> Sister Benita is running the hub at Barnsley Casualty, and the patients keep piling in. We've got no beds, basically. Medicine's really tight, surgery's very tight, ortho tight, gynae now, CCU, uh, one and ITU one. Peds have got six. But today, the area under the biggest pressure is rhesus. In Bay 3, Dr Acti is overseeing the care of kidney patient Wendy. I'm just going to sort out your oxygen because it's not it's all a bit on skew with. She was admitted with heart palpitations. The medication to control her dangerously high heart rate failed. Now Dr King is going to apply double the dose. A lot of it is trusting your judgement and saying that, yeah, I can, I can consider these things, but looking at the picture on a whole, I think that this is a safe option to go with and I'm happy with this decision. Okay. Yeah. That's 12. So 12. 12 milligrams, 4 mils of 3 in one. Okay. I'm given. Flushed. Doing all right, Wendy. Oh. What's changed? 
You'll feel this better in a minute, I promise. You probably don't feel it at the moment. You probably want to wallop me one. That heaviness has gone out my chest as well. Perfect. Have you got any pain left at all? No, oh, it's, it's gone. Good. It's gone. It could be if your bloods are okay and you remain well. Often with SVTs, we send every, we send people home after a couple of hours of observation. It's just obviously you're just such quite a complex patient. Um, it's just making a decision whether that's right for you or not. The patients are still flooding in, and volunteer Jane is on hand to offer some traditional Yorkshire hospitality. The most important trolley in this department is the tea trolley. Most important. So it needs to be kept prepared and cleaned at all times. Well, I still believe that a cup of tea will fix everything, but obviously, <laughs> medically, it'll not. But, yeah, a cup of tea helps anyway. I'm not saying it fixes everything, but a cup of tea definitely helps. I wish I could be like, like that martini advert with the roller skates. My work family is different to my family at home, obviously. Um, but yeah, I've got very much a work family. Uh, people that I know I can rely on, talk to, have a laugh with. And in the hub, at the heart of the casualty family, is Sister Benita. The Great North Run, she fell. They keep saying exercise is good for you. I haven't seen any evidence at all that exercise is good for you. She fell. She could hardly walk on Monday. Do you do any exercise, young man? Do you, Jane? Me, I go to the gymnasium three days a week. I do a pilot's class, and now I do an aerobic class. And it's one, two, two. And I, and I do an aerobics class on a Tuesday morning. Uh, pilot's on a Thursday morning, but I'm not very good at that. Uh, is that Pilates? Is that, what, is that what I just said? I use a pilot's class. Same difference. Pilates. Same difference. <laughs> You get a mat, you lay down. But the most exercise I get is my jaw. You fall off things. <laughs> Paramedics are rushing a man injured in a building site accident into recess. Nurse Abby prepares Bay 5 as consultant Dr Liz Doherty examines 41-year-old Rob. Can you manage to support and I can have a look at your back and say it's high or is it too sore? So what we tend to do in this situation is we're obviously just going to get some blood off, make sure everything's checking yep. out okay with those, and then we're going to get a detailed scan of what's, what's happening to you, the way it's coming down. Robert's mates brought him into casualty in the works van. Well, we pulled him out, uh, got him off of the scaffolding, put him into a van, decided what we are going to do with this. A bay has just become available for his new patient, 65-year-old Alan, who has a serious head wound following an epileptic fit. Yeah, something I don't have a side. Hang on, Alan. Sorry. Nice and calm, Bonnie. Ready, set. Okay. He's an own epileptic and yeah. we believe that his epilepsy alarm has contacted citywide who have turned up um like a care company that's about yes. okay. They found him face down on the floor in a pool of blood. Yes, um, where? At his own home. Outside his own home. Yes. Okay. And then so we can get that off. Go on, keep going. Being quite agitated. Yes. Temperature thirty four point seven. Thirty four seven, seven, yeah. Yes, and a BM of eight. BM of eight. Okay. Hello. Shine this torch in your eyes, okay? Open this eye for me. That's it. Let's have a little look. Open your eye. We're just in Barnsley Hospital. Yeah. Looks like you've had another fit, matey. Yeah. Alan. Okay. Alan's sister Linda arrives. Hello. Hello. Alan, I'm just going to put the doctors. Ambulance crew brought him in. Can see. Yeah. Looks like he had a fit. Okay. And he's bumped his head quite nicely. It's 
a bit of a shock when you see him looking it looks, like that. Looks it? Worse it looks worse than it is. It looks worse than it is, I know. Okay, so they do bleed quite a bit. But it'll be a while, it takes a while to come out of it. How long? He has got, he's got um, a subarachnoid cyst. They operated to debulk it. To debulk it, yes. But they weren't able to take it all without taking it. Is that the source of his epilepsy? Yes. Yeah, okay, fine. Getting information from relatives is vital, um, both in terms of what has happened on the day to have brought that patient in there, however, also their past medical history. He's lived with this condition for about 30 years or so, but always cheerful, always says he's fine, you know, doesn't tell you that there's anything wrong, doesn't like to bother you, that sort of thing. He's now having trouble with his breathing. He's got a lot of mucky stuff in his airway, hasn't he? Mm. Sorry, mate. He's probably pooling secretions down the back of his throat. Right. Are you? Ah, oh, wonderful. Thanks. Once Alan is stabilised, the team take him for a CT scan to check for internal bleeding in his head. Move. We know he's got epilepsy, so it doesn't do him. The fact that he's dropped his GCS doesn't bother us that much. The fact that he's had further seizures. Hold your breath. The cyst that he has on near the brain stem is, did change, did start to change. So they eventually did operate to try and reduce it a bit, but they can't take all of it away. Um, but you know, it's still cheerful. At the minute, I'm going to make sure he's not got any bleed or contusion into his brain. And it's a worry that is it starting to grow back again and that it's going to progressively get worse. Than, and it might take his independence away from him. Patients are still flooding in, and volunteer Jane is on hand to offer some traditional Yorkshire hospitality. The most important trolley in this department is the tea trolley. Most important. So it needs to be kept prepared and cleaned at all times. Well, I still believe that a cup of tea will fix everything, but obviously, <laughs> medically, it'll not. But, yeah. A cup of tea helps anyway. I'm not saying it fixes everything, but a cup of tea definitely helps. I wish I could be that, like that martini advert where they've got roller skates. My work family is different to my family at home, obviously. Um, but yeah, I've got very much a work family. Uh, people that I know I can rely on, talk to, have a laugh with. And in the hub, at the heart of the casualty family, is Sister Benita. Great North Run, she fell. They keep saying exercise is good for you. I haven't seen any evidence at all that exercise is good for you. She fell. She could hardly walk on Monday. Do you do any exercise, young man? Do you, Jane? Me, I go to the gymnasium three days a week. I do a pilot's class, and then I do an aerobic class. And it's one, two, two. And I, and I do an aerobics class on a Tuesday morning. Uh, pilot's on a Thursday morning, but I'm not very good at that. Uh, is that Pilates? Is that what, is that what I just said? Well, it's a pilot's class. Same difference. Pilates. Same difference. <laughs> you get a mat, you lay down. But the most exercise I get is my jaw. <laughs> Design floor. Volunteer Jane is back on her rounds with her trusty tea trolley. I'll indicate that way. Now then, tea or coffee, dear? Uh, tea. One cup of tea and no sugar. No sugar. Sweet enough, then, are you? They are my cherub. Some patients are over the moon that you brought them a cup of tea and some toast, and they even offer to pay for it. You know, I've had patients and, and relatives, how much do we owe you? You owe me nothing. It, it's a cup of tea, it's a tea bag and a bit of water. And... Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee, no sugar. Coffee, no sugar. I'd like to think that we give patients more than just hot drink. But sometimes just a bit of plain, simple banter, uh, it can make all the difference. You don't look very happy today. No, I'm struggling to see you. Are you? What do you, what do you see when you see me? 
Right now, I, I can recognise you, but if you stand ten foot further back, because it's like... Do I look like Angelina Jolie or Jennifer Aniston, the further back I go? How about... Yeah. <laughs> There's no wrong with his eyes, is there? I keep telling him there's no wrong with his eyes. Eh? You're hearing all right. <laughs> Yeah. No, you're not seeing me in a bed. I'm going there. Benita, when will you be working, my child? Oh, no, actually. Well, no, it's next week. I'm yeah. on Monday. Yeah. No, look, look at the gluage, the days. It could be another three or four months before I see you. Ta-da, darling. When I get home, I like to have a glass of wine or a gin. I feel a sense of relief that I've my shifts over, in one respect, uh, and hopefully a sense of pride that I've done a good enough job during that shift. In recent... Sister Jane might need to request a bed on intensive care for 59-year-old Adele. Nurse Cheryl is still struggling to stabilise her breathing in recess. Can you get me another gas needle, please? It's really massively important for us to keep calm. Now, inside we might not be calm, but on the external we need to be calm. What I want you to do now, look at me, Adele. I want you to sit back. Right. I always think about that swan, you know, looks really elegant on the on the lake, swimming very elegantly, but underneath the legs are going like lightning. And sometimes we're like that. Oh. Right, OK, you're safe now, OK? I know it will be with the breathing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice and relaxed for me now. Some nice, long breaths. It's all right. I know it is, I know it is. I know. Listen, listen. Yeah. Just calm your breathing a bit. Now. I know, I know. Paramedic Michaela brought Adele in. You're not going yet, are you, Michaela? I will be in a minute. All right. Oh. Hello. <laughs> as much as you just had love to stay Hello. with you for a day. You've got me now. I'm going to look Hello, after you. She's been holding with me and him. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, Come on, don't get upset. You'll get worse. I'm going to cry. I know, I know. Sometimes when the patients come into resource, they've already formed that really good bond with that paramedic. And so that's massively important to make sure that the patient's aware that they've got to go, but that you're there for them now and that you're going to take over and you're going to look after them. Adele has been given steroids and a nebulizer to try to improve her lung function. Okay, so you've got widespread wheezing across your chest, all right? That's yeah. your upper airway, so yeah. we're, going to, we're giving you the right things. We just need to get the gas that we've done. Right. And we'll get you some blood soft now. Yeah. Well, okay. It's all right, you don't have to be sorry, sweetheart. Adele's medical history gives cause for concern. I had really? pneumonia when I was about okay. 19. Right. I need that bad. Yeah. We need to make sure you haven't got that again. Nurse Cheryl has arranged an X-ray to check for pneumonia. Well, you shall be to breathe in and hold your breath. Don't let me laugh. <laughs> what, no, breathe in or hold it? I'll tell you what. Don't worry. <sighs> I'm breathing now, I'm Oh, no. That's a ribbon yeah, too. That looks alright? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take this mask off now and see where we're at. Nice breathing for me now. That's right. Oh, no. That's a big doing that, that breathing all night. Yeah, you get into a routine then, don't you? Yeah, yeah. There may be no sign of pneumonia, but there is an infection which needs treating urgently. So this is your antibiotic. Because we've seen that little bit of infection yes, on the bottom of the right lung. We think anyway we have. We'll see what the report says. It's not massive, but it's certainly there. No, well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, lovely. Yeah, this will help. Let's get that back on board because you were doing really well. Yeah, love. All right, so that's the antibiotics in your bloodstream, so that's sorted. Cheers, I love. On the ward, Adele's breathing improved further. She was well enough to go home the next day. 84-year-old Terry fell in his kitchen and his wife Lydia called 999. So what happened? Dr Trimble will be treating him. I just started to move away from the sink. Mm-hmm. Pulled my left foot. He just gave way. It wasn't like you slipped in anything. I just went down and heard a crack. Okay. Get off the key on the foot. You just... Oh, you can turn it the same way. Yeah, just... Just... just in a minute, I'm going to straighten this. I'll not like you. 
it will hurt a bit. So if you take that, that will help. Very floppy. Can you straighten it now? Yeah, it's quite, it's just quite unstable. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's Because really every, every time it's like it's moving, it's just clicking. We need to put a plaster on because it won't stay like that if we let go. Sister Vicky breaks some bad news to Terry. We might have to cut your joggers off. Yeah. Your Sheffield Wednesday ones as well, I know. Are you OK for me to cut them off? Yeah. I think you deserve a new pair after this. Ashley will buy you some. <laughs> Terry's ankle is tightly secured with bandages and a temporary cast, while doctors investigate whether he needs surgery. You okay? That's as bad as it gets. Well done. Okay. Terence, what did you used to do as a job? Musician. Musician? I worked all over the world. Played for Engelbert Humperdy. Oh, yeah. Jim Mansfield, the film star. Lydian and Terry have been married nearly 40 years and travelled the world together. The girl is my astro. No, my, how do you say it? My astro. My astro. Dr. Trimble orders an X-ray to find out the severity of Terry's fracture. He may require an operation to fix his ankle in place. That's your x-ray there. Oh, my God. You can see the big crack down here. Yeah. And a big split through there as well. That was the bit that was poking out the skin. And another bone, which is your fibula, that's fractured as well. So two fractures? Yeah, two fractures. But it's obviously, from the joint line, you can see it's very unstable. Very nice to meet you. And you. My name's Nick. So you've got something called an open fracture. I'm going to speak to my boss, but potentially you might have to go over to Sheffield. All right. And they're probably better equipped to deal with it than we okay. are. OK? All right. There is. Sheffield is 23 miles away. Are you OK? Sure. She's not. No. Listen, everything's going to be OK. All right. She's straight about my mind. I think I can't drive out of yeah. Listen, if you need to get over, I'm sure that they'll let you get in on with them and, and transfer and cross over with them. Yeah. And if you've got family, then they can fetch you back. Yeah. OK? Don't worry about things like that. Consultant Dr John Rayner has spoken to a colleague in Sheffield. She's keen to see you tonight, um, and if you need an operation, she's likely to have that in the morning. So yes. what we're going to do is move you to our little ward, CDU. When they ring us to say that you've got a bed over there, we'll send you over with an ambulance. Thank you, both of the hospital. That's all right. No problem. Thank you very much. Nurse Kate is looking after two-year-old Elle. So she was downstairs where she was sick. Yeah. And she'd been sick, I took her upstairs. Can I have a look in your eyes? Aero was rushed in by ambulance with her mum's storm because she's been having fits. Good girl. Can I put these on your arms, please? They're muscles. Aero's clothes have been removed to cool her down. Her fitting might be caused by a high temperature. She was being sick, and as I was trying to undress her, she was just like going floppy. And I was rolling back. OK. And then when did she do the shaking thing? When That's she, all yeah, the time. Yeah. Air's blood sugar was very low when she arrived. To raise it, she was given jelly to eat. Did it taste nice? Yeah, you think? Yeah, but Mum says no. Let's borrow them toes. Give him a clean. Oh, dropped it. And are we ready? One, two, three. Well done. No, it's got even lower, unfortunately. Low blood sugar can cause seizures and brain damage. Aira's given a glucose injection. Oh, they've got a blue bus. That little boy saying, Where is my teddy bear? <laughs> Play leader Lindsay Holmes and Aira's sister Evan team up to distract her.
junior doctor John Shepherd investigates the cause of two-year-old Aira's low blood sugar. Diabetes does run in my family. Okay. Who has diabetes? Um, my granddad was a diabetic. Yeah. My mum passed away two years ago from a diabetic coma. Okay. Nurse Kate is taking another blood sample to see if Aira's blood sugar has improved. Can I borrow your finger? And we're going to do that stamp. Stamp, stamp. Are we ready? Oh, all done. Clever girl. Please. You are bleeding. Let's clean it up. Fantastic. That magic? That's it. Oh, all gone. Era's blood sugars are now five times what they were earlier. <laughs> Lovely. Gone. It's gone up, yeah. It's much better now. Do you want a plaster? I don't need a plaster. She was a little fiber. Ew! It could be a virus that caused the vomiting, and then the vomiting that caused the low blood sugar, and the low blood sugar that caused the shaking. I don't we're gonna go upstairs now. We're gonna go up to a different place. Is that okay? Bye. On the ward, Era's blood sugars continued to improve. Diabetes was ruled out, and she was soon well enough to go home. So we get this young man across, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. Oh. 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 Fine. Just have a quick look and make sure there's no either open wound or any flail segment. Dean? Yeah. My name's Dean as well. How are you doing, mate? All right, mate. Yeah. We're going to get you some good pain relief in a minute. Yeah. Treating patients in extreme pain can be difficult. Just trying to figure out sometimes where the pain's coming from. If naught is no pain and tens the worst possible pain, where you would put it at the minute? Uh, seven to eight. Uh... Okay, so way up there. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to give some strong pain relief. OK, no big movements. Good. Uh, Sorry. So, should we log roll him this way? And ready, okay. brace, roll. Uh, that's it done. OK. Dean, do you know how fast you were going at the time? Uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour. So, not too fast. So, you clip these back with what of your bike? Full on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So you came to a halt? Uh, yeah, it threw me across the road. OK. Definitely not knocked out? No. OK, fine. Dr Mart needs to examine Dean to check for spinal or internal injuries. I'm just going to have a little feel of your pelvis. Any pain? No. no. I'm going to be firm again. Any pain? Right, wiggle those fingers for me. OK, can you feel me touching? Yeah. You feel me touching? Yeah. Me thumbs up sign. Good man. Come on, da, da, da. Up, 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 up. Give me a squeeze here. OK. Well, I think you've broken that arm yeah. quite badly. Oh. Yeah? Dr Mark photographs Dean's open wound on the department's phone to send to the orthopaedic team for further assessment. Hang on, best matey. Yeah, you're doing all right. So, Dean, what I'm going to do is this. That left elbow of yours. Yeah, I'm just going to put some local anaesthetic into that. Is that right? What are you doing? Putting the needle into the cup? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of stinging. Ow. Sorry, sorry. I am Ow. so sorry. Ah. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. Oh, man, I'm here. Ah, yeah, no, I am so oh. sorry. Very kind. In one mil. That's very kind. Agree. I agree. The team dress and stabilise Dean's arm. Yeah. With the bone possibly broken, this yeah. procedure can be extremely painful. So, Dean, unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing these things yet. Do you understand? Yeah? Mate? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, there's no easy way, yeah? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh! 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 Shall we give him 
Shall we give him some, um, shall we give him some Penthrox? <laughs> so, what we're going to do is this. We're going to send him for a series of x-rays, OK? The concern is that that shoulder okay. might be broken, OK, which is why he's so sore and so swollen up there. So okay. basically, the whole thing is broken. Yeah. We'll see. Dean is taken to X-ray to determine the full extent of his injuries. Uh, Diabetic Liam is here with his grandmother, Mary. Hiya, Liam. I'm Laurie. I'm one of the doctors. I think we met before, have we? You were in a few days ago. Um, how are you doing at the moment? Oh, I'm feeling uh, I'm uh, uh, okay, mate. So, we've checked your blood sugars and your ketones and you've got a problem with your diabetes again. So, Diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis by the signs of it. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a very serious medical condition. Patients generally come in very unwell, very dehydrated, fast heart rates, can cause a lot of tummy pain. Liam has struggled to control his diabetes since his mother passed away. Mum recently passed away. Christmas Day, two years since. Mum passed away. And, well, she died with actually. And then when they told us she was dying, he she just says to me, what about Liam? I says, I'll look after him, and I have done. What, what she brought is your daughter? Yeah. 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 Mm. So you're still uncomfortable, aren't you? Any pain around your back at all? Despite being given insulin, Liam's sugar levels are not dropping. Dr Malloy is concerned there may be more to the condition than he first thought. There's not like a long-running history of infection or anything that makes me think it would be sepsis, but I think if there's any significant derangement in his blood, I need to consider that. Liam's sugar levels are still so unstable, his body is now going into shock. Unless Dr. Malloy can bring the diabetes under control in the next few hours, Liam's life remains at risk. In recess, 20-year-old diabetic Liam is still suffering with severe abdominal pain. Do you want to give yourself your insulin? His dad, Andrew, has come to be with him. So, the plan at the moment, he came in, had really high sugars, no high ketones like he's had before, which is what your, your body produces when you can't get the sugar into your cells. Bloods, they were, weren't great to start with, to be honest, um, but they are slowly improving. Um, so, I think we should be able to get him up to a acute medical unit. So, ketones are three now, which is a lot better. Liam remained in hospital for nine days. His insulin levels eventually returned to normal and his pain subsided. He is now working on controlling his diabetes. For eight years, Ken worked at Barnsley Hospital as a security guard. Earlier this year, he had a stroke and his wife, Valerie, is concerned that it may have happened again. Are you all right? All right, are you all right? I'm not too bad, but you're not so good, are you? It's been way more than an hour. I've had, uh, All right. You're not going to be able to... It's me. It any. You're not going to be able to tell me at the moment because no. your speech isn't quite right. Let me, no, let me hear bad. what you guys got to say. Yeah, but he just weren't well tonight. We didn't know if he were in stroking or a seizure or a children. Just... So when did you stop being security here? 2012. 
I thought I'd seen you around, <laughs> and that's why. I'm amazing yeah. coming into Malaysia. We try and make sure that we give people the best treatment we can. You know, when it's staff, they're a little bit like your own family. This has always been weak, hasn't it? And you make sure that they're, they're treated with the respect that they, they've earned and deserve, really. So you had a stroke earlier in the year, yeah. and did it take this arm yeah, this, and your leg? This, that one. Right, and how much of a recovery have you made from that well, stroke? Well, it's, it's, every, every, it was, every, this, this is an elephant, it's all right. Yeah, OK. Yeah, this that. is... It, 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 it's not open to All right, make, OK. Make more. A stroke can affect your speech because you cannot say the right words or the words that you're using are the wrong type of words. You can understand what people are saying to you, but you can't reply, and that is, it must be incredibly... Uh, distressing. What's this called? Scan. What's pen. A pen, that's right. OK, yes. yes. And what do you do with it? That's where you put it all, all, all forward, isn't it? That there. Yes, what do you do with it? What's it called? Calvator, or whatever they call it. Right, there. OK. All right. Strokes that affect speech are really, really disabling for patients and really quite frightening and um, anxiety provoking. Um, what's this? That, that's, that's a bank leader. Now, what we are going to need to do is you're going to need to go and have another scan of your brain, uh -huh. OK? Because you may have had a little bit more of a stroke and that's why things are not quite right, OK? Yeah. And when the alarm break go in... Yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a difficulty understanding it at the moment, but, you know... Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> if Ken has had another stroke, there's just a four-hour window in which effective treatment can be given. While Ken is taken to CT as a priority, Dr Humphrey phones ahead. Julian Humphrey here. One of our old security guards has come in with a... He's had a stroke before, but he's come in with possibly an extension of his stroke. He's got a dis expressive dysphasia. See you later. Bye. It's a very frustrating thing to have an expressive dysphasia like that, where you can't, you know what you want to say, but it's all coming out as gibberish. Ken's scan revealed he had suffered a seizure, a result of his previous stroke. After being monitored for a few hours, he was able to return home. He continues to suffer with speech difficulties and is being supported by his family. 32-year-old Michael has been involved in a serious motorbike accident. He has an open wound on his left leg and is in severe pain throughout most of his body. Dr Trimble is assigned to his case. Hello. Yeah. Most of the time you kind of can guess if something's fractured by examination, um, but I think sometimes you get surprised by the extent of what's happened to the bones still. Um, I'm going to get you a test x-ray extra your hips, but obviously extra these hands. We'll do the shoulder and we'll do this um, left leg as well. Dr Trimble orders eight different x-rays to assess the scale of damage to Michael. He's having x-rays of his hands, hips, neck, shoulders and legs. Just gonna lay you down a little bit. Go with the bed. Including the leg which was pinned back together after a previous motorbike smash. With Michael back in Bay 8, Dr Trimble looks at his results. They're a bit surprising. Hello. So, you've been a lucky boy. You've only got one fracture. It's in this foot. We're going to have to put a cast on it. You're pinning and everything's all right, but I suspect you'll have quite a lot of muscular damage because obviously it's such a big plate that's in it. I'm quite like to at least keep you to the morning and try and get on top of pain relief as well and just check nothing else shows too. I'm not close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll take take this off um, just so we can have a look at it. Sorry. It's pretty chunky. Sorry. Where's that come from there? What's that? So I'm not sure. That's my bone. No, it's your muscle. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that's all right. Yeah. 
I've popped in for some more painkillers and we'll get this all sorted, okay. Sister Jo arrives to get Michael ready for the rest of his night in hospital. So you need to put on this foot, this leg, and then we're just going to put this dressing over that one, okay? I'm really glad they've said I need to put on that one because if I had two pots on, that would be it. <laughs> You're not going to walk. I'm going to put scaffolding with. You're not going to get on any scaffolding. It's a matter of being able to walk and stuff. You're not going to be safe on on his open wound. Cool to be kind and all that. This is what it is. It is. Be gentle. Always from middle man. <laughs> Michael will be in plaster for at least six weeks. But this time, he says he's learnt his lesson. <laughs> in recess, after a severe asthma attack, is 18 year old Dalton with his girlfriend Amy. Dalton is on NEBS. Medicine pumped straight into his lungs to clear his airways. Dr. Hill tests whether the drugs are getting his breathing back to a safe rate. His rate should be about 500, so Dalton is still at risk. We're just going to take it off for a bit. I'll get you another set of... Your gas was slightly worse than the one we did earlier. Yeah. So we're going to talk to our crystal care team to get them to come and see you. If his medication doesn't start working soon, Dalton may need to go to intensive care. I just need to check if you blood gas again. I know we've been a bit better during the day. But worse again tonight. Yeah. It's a nervous wait for the new blood results. I've got to myself, please. No. So, so that blood gas is very similar to the one that they did about midnight-ish. Um, and, it, and it's certainly a bit better than the one that looked like it was getting a bit worse. So. so at the minute, you don't need to come to critical care bed. You know, we certainly need to keep, keep you here in the hospital and keep a close eye on everything. 
Dalton spent the rest of the day under supervision on the general ward. He was monitored on the short stay unit and went home three days later. He lives with the threat of the next attack and a lifetime of hospital visits. Tony. Tony is out for the count. Tony. Tony, sorry to wait you, Tony. Sorry. Jake, one of the doctors, sorry to bother you. It's all right if we come and get you seen. Okay, let's get you a bay. The 27 year old is no stranger to the hospital. I've been on fire with this trolley tonight. She has many complex conditions, which means she's regularly admitted. This time, she's come in after a nasty fall. My bladder is a bit funny because it's hurting all down my leg, my hip, and my lower back. It's really painful. You hit your head or? No, I'm just all this is death. They're an interesting bunch in Barnsley. Um, they're all they're all pretty stoic. Uh, a lot of characters. Um, considering they're in A and E, a lot of them are up for a good laugh. Don't know how that happens, but yeah, everyone's pretty fun. Dr. Mullen needs to work out what's caused this particular accident. Heard you got uh, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, is that type three? Yeah. Okay, uh, you've got um, pots. Um, have you got leaking heart valves? Yeah, so which valves and what sort of? Do you know? Yeah, that's okay, don't worry about it. You have to If you guess three, you can't find them. Yeah, that's true, it's true. A lot of jobs, there's sort of a list of conditions that you have and you get really good at treating them, but A&E, anything can come through the door. Um, you get a wide range, so we learn to sort of deal with that unpredictability. Why don't you take a look at your legs? Okay. Brace yourself, they're not pretty. It's all right. I think I'll probably keep your bandages on. Tony has a rare condition called Ellis-Danlos syndrome which weakens tendons and ligaments. Take it easy. If you're at all sort of worried, let me know. <laughs> OK, you all right? Dr Mullen believes the fall has been caused by her long-standing joint problems. How are you doing? Struggling? No, OK. Do you reckon we can try and get you back on this bed? But he needs to make sure there isn't any new damage. I think given the fact that you're not sort of able to, you're not been able to really sort of weight bear on it, I think it would be probably worth us getting a couple x-rays of it. And if it's all normal, we'll get you to um, what we call CDU, the Clinical Decisions Unit. It's a little sort of short stay ward we have. You've been there before. We're on top of you here. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get you seen there. And so, you know, we'll try and get your work moving tomorrow. Well, I'll get those x-rays sorted, OK? Mm. Tony's scans have come through. Dr Mullen gives her the results. Your x-ray was absolutely fine. That bloody hurt, to tell you that. What, getting to the, the bed and back, getting off the bed? No, the memory would lift my leg off. Oh, OK. So we'll get you around to CDU. I'll be some, that'll be sort of, I say tomorrow morning, it's already tomorrow morning, but in a few hours, okay? See what we can do. All right, thank you very much. Love to meet you, Tony. Tony is kept in for yet another night at the hospital.